Hello and welcome. My name is Jeff. I'm glad you're here. In this video, we're going to create a dynamic pivot table style report with a single formula. Now, to appreciate how beautiful that report is, it's the most beautiful report of all, by the way. To appreciate how beautiful that report is, we need to take a little trip down memory lane. Historically, we've had data, okay, that we've wanted to summarize. And we've had two basic report sort of options, right? The first option is to create a formula-based report. And when we create a formula-based report, we're basically grabbing the items. Uh, these are going to be the report rows or the report labels. And so we get these in here manually. Maybe we copy paste special. Uh, maybe we remove duplicates, paste them. Maybe we type them, but we get these report values. And then we create a formula that calculates the values for these labels. In this case, I've used the sum ifs function, um, and we'll go into the details of that in a moment, but we've used formulas here. And the benefit of this kind of report is that it will automatically recalculate any of these values when the underlying data changes. The disadvantage of this report style is that it doesn't automatically expand when we add new items. So in other words, See, these items are listed here. We go to the data. Now, if we add a new row for an item that is already in this list, like we're good, right? AB101 is currently 386. Let's cruise over here. AB101, let's do 1,000, enter. And just like that, it's automatically included, okay? However, let me go ahead and undo this. However, any new items that are added to the data that are not found currently in this report are not automatically included. In other words, this report won't automatically update its dimensions. Let's try that one. Let's do ZZ500 and let's add 1,000. When we cruise over here, we notice that our report's total is still the same. ZZ is not in here. That means that in order to get it in here, we would need to you know, insert a new report row, write the formula, fill the formula down, and that kind of thing. So that's the pro and the con. The pro automatically recalculates when dependent values change. Con is it doesn't automatically expand for new items. Now, that leads us to the second historical way that we've been able to tackle this, and that is with a pivot table report, pros and cons. The pro is that any new data values, including new items, will automatically be included. In other words, the pivot table report's dimensions automatically expand to accommodate whatever data is in our data source. The con is that it doesn't automatically do it. We have to remember to right click and refresh. So that's kind of the pro and con. So let me just demonstrate that here. If we do ZZ 400 for 1000, we cruise back to the pivot table, nothing has changed. But when we right click and refresh, we see that the report dimensions have automatically expanded to include that new item, okay? So let me go ahead and remove this. Let's cruise back over here, right click and refresh, okay. So, you with me so far? Two different report styles. Formula-based reports, pro, auto refresh, con, doesn't auto expand. Pivot table, the pro is that it will automatically expand its dimensions, con is we have to right click and refresh. So now, if you're connecting all the dots, what you're gonna see is that we now have another option. It is the most beautiful report of all reports, okay? Maybe not cosmetically, but it's more like function over form, right? Um, but in any event, this is a pivot table style report. It's not a pivot table, but it looks like a pivot table. It's a pivot table style report that is generated with a single formula that carries forward both of the pros and none of the cons. In other words, it automatically refreshes, so no right-click refresh, uh, it's hands-free, and it automatically expands for new items. So before I break down the formula, let's just see it in operation here. Here we have our formula-based report, 21715. Here we have our pivot table, 21715. Here we have our beautiful report, 21715. Let's cruise back to the data. Let's add um, a new value, ZZ400 for $1,000. Historical uh, formula-based report, it's not included. Pivot table, not included. Beautiful report <laughs> is included, okay? That's what I'm talking about. The dimensions automatically expand 
all the new report values are calculated. It's totally hands-free, no right-click refresh, and it is a beautiful report. So how did we make this report? Well, it uses dynamic array formulas or dynamic array functions. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to actually build this into three separate parts, and then we'll combine them all together. So the first function we want to understand is called hstack, and it stacks tables horizontally. So as a simple example, let's do an H stack and let's combine um, our report labels here. So we're going to call it item num. Okay, that's one value and then amount. Okay, that's the second value. So what this create is creating, it's creating a table. The table is only one row, right? Two columns, um, but we're going to need this in the next step. But understand that the purpose of it is to combine columns of data side by side. Now, let's figure out how to get the grand total row in here. Well, what we would do here is, again, we'd H stack, and in the first cell we want the word grand total, and then we'd want the sum of the data table's amount column. Okay, so that's just looking back to the data table, it's looking at the amount column, it's adding up those values, and we hit enter. And so now we've got these two values. And now to get the middle values, right, the report body, what do we do here? Well, what we want to do is we want to sort the unique values that are found in the data table's item number column. Okay, we hit enter, and that dynamically pulls um, a unique and sorted list of the items found in that data table. Now to get this value, what we'll do here is we'll use some ifs. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to add up the data table's amount column, and we only want to include those rows where the item number is equal to this stuff, and enter. Okay, and now we get the basic components of this. Okay, and we could apply some cell formatting, no big deal. And now what we need to do is somehow like stack all these on top of each other so they're so it's just one formula because otherwise this formula is going to be here if there's a new item it's not going to auto expand because this stuff is in the way so we need to get it into one single table so what we're going to do is we're going to use um, v stack for that so first of all before we v stack anything let's go ahead and and let me show you how h stack would work with these here okay so if i wanted to put those right here I would go H stack, and I would want to grab all of this stuff, comma, and all of this stuff. And now you can see it's creating you know, a table with two columns and as many rows as needed based on these two ranges. Okay, so now we'd want to combine all of this stuff, right? So let me go ahead and delete this. Now what we can do is we can go equals V stack. So the first thing that we want to stack are the headers comma, and this is stacking tables uh, vertically. And then we want to stack these two. So again, we're going to go with H stack first to combine this, comma, with this, okay? And then we want to V stack in this. All right, so before I hit enter, let's review. V stack is going to stack these three tables. First, E7, then it's going to combine these side by side to create a single table with two columns and then the, the footers. Hit enter, now we got it. Now, this is a single formula, okay, but it has some helper cells. In other words, it's relying on these calculations. So if we wanted to, you know, combine all of this stuff so there was no need for helpers, what we could do is just replace all of these. So instead of E7, what we do is we just grab this underlying function here, cruise over here, and just copy paste. Okay, and then we would grab and replace, let's replace E18 next, so we'd cruise over here. We'd grab all this stuff, copy and paste. And now we wanna replace this E8 reference, so we'd grab this, we'd copy all of this stuff, cruise back over here and paste. And then we wanna replace this blue, so we cruise over here Grab all this stuff, copy, cruise over here, and paste. Okay, and then we also have another reference of E8, so we'd want to grab all this stuff, copy, cruise over here, and 
paste. Okay. Okay, now there's no more references to any of this stuff, so we can literally just delete all this stuff, and this still works. And now we've recreated this with a single formula, and we could, of course, apply some um, cell formatting. That would be fine. We could do some bold. That's fine. Um, and then kind of the question is, how do we handle this border? Well, what we could do is we could apply conditional formatting. So let me go ahead and delete this stuff, and let's select these. Uh, and if we go to Home, Conditional Formatting, Manage Rules, we can see basically that I set up a rule that says if the value in, in column B is equal to the word grand total, then apply a top, um, and we could click Edit Rule, and then we could click Format, it's applying a top cell border. Okay, So that way we get this cell border dynamically as the values change. So another thing that we could do is we could use the let function as a container for all of these components to make it easier to kind of read and understand and troubleshoot and maintain this instead of just seeing a bunch of nested vstack, hstack, some ifs like unique sort. And so if we wanted to use that kind of capability, what we do is we'd say let, and we'd say let the word um, r, which we're going to use for row labels, be equal to sort unique of TBL data's item number, okay? And then we're gonna say let the values, okay, v be equal to the sum ifs function. So we wanna add up the amount column, only include those rows where the item num value is equal to the value in the r column, okay? Close that function, comma. And then for the headers, we'll say let the headers be equal to, and then we use the h stack of um, item num and amount. Okay, and then we'll let the body be equal to h stack of um, rows and values. And then we'll let the uh, footer be equal to h stack of grand total and then the sum of TBL data's amount column. Okay? And then we'll say for the result, we want to V stack uh, the header, which was called headers. And we want to stack that to the body and we want to st uh, stack that to the footer close and close and enter. And now all that stuff comes out in one and it just makes it a little easier to, to kind of troubleshoot and maintain over time. And so that's what we're going to see right here with this let function. Okay, cool. All right. So hopefully that helps um, break down some of the functions needed to create a pivot table style report that is dynamic in a single formula so that it will automatically recalculate values hands-free, and it will also dynamically adapt to include any new items that are found in the underlying source data. Most beautiful report style of all. It's the beautiful combination of the pros of a formula-based report and the pros of a pivot table report without any of the cons. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and be sure to turn on notifications so you won't miss our new Excel videos. If you'd like to receive free weekly Excel tips delivered to your inbox, please sign up for the Excel University blog. If you'd like to learn more about our structured on-demand Excel training programs, please check out the Excel University website. All skill levels are welcome. This video is a production of Excel University.